All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 18th of April in the year of our Lord, 2022. And I'm going to talk some more about women in the pulpit, women in leadership in the church. Well, no. Simple answer, no, it's not permitted. Uh, and I'm going to look into it. Now, we live in a day and age when lots of things are being permitted in society, encouraged in society, and the church is becoming conformed to the world. The church does not want to be separate from the world, which will destroy it. You cannot compromise with the world. You cannot, if you are willing to be conformed to this world, to go with the ways of this world, well, you're going to end up with the destination, in the destination this world is going to. And it's not to the kingdom of God. It's not to heaven. If you're going to follow Christ, you've got to be willing to take up your cross and follow him. To be unpopular in this world, to be unpopular in today's Christianity. Because it's not Christianity of Jesus and the apostles. So today we have lots of people, well-known people, important people, that are saying there's no problem with women in the pulpit, and they justify it all kinds of ways. N.T. Wright, a uh, well-known Christian of dubious uh, doctrine, but well-known, famous uh, writer and theologian. Uh, give, let's call him that way, a theologian, because that doesn't say anything about whether it's true or not, is, is out there promoting the idea of women in the ministry based on a name in the New Testament in Romans 16, 7. He says that... Uh, because of this, women can be in the pulpit. Romans 16, 7. Well, he gives some other examples like this, but this was the main one. Uh, Greet Andronicus and Junia. My f I'm going to use the King James because the, the new King James has a problem there. My kinsmen, kinsmen, and my uh, fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who, are, who also were in Christ before me. In other words, they were Christians before Paul became a Christian. So here we have Andronicus and Junia. Junia sounds like a feminine name, doesn't it? Because it is feminine. However, if you look down here, you have the New King James says Junia. New, New American Standard has Junias, which is a masculine name. Junias. ESV. Junia. NIV, Junia. NLT, Junia. You can tell which translations love to go with the world. Young's literal translation, Junias. Okay. So let me go down. I'm going to dismiss. See, N.T. Wright's supposed to be a Christian scholar. If he is, well, certainly he's educated. He knows this, but doesn't care about it. So either, either his, his uh, ideology has so blinded his eyes he can't see the words of Scripture, or he doesn't care what they are. N.T. Wright, I, or both. You know. uh, N.T. Wright's famous for his, the new uh, understanding of the epistles of Paul. In other words, uh, twisting the Bible to say something other than it says. So it says here down in the Greek, and there's no textual variation, that the word junia or junias is the word junion. Well, I'm anglifying it a little bit. It's a, uh, it's a union, union. That's the accusative form, the 
direct object. The, uh, there's cases to the nouns in Greek, just like in Latin and in Spanish and other things. Other things. So you have masculine, feminine, and gender and uh, neuter gender. Although the gender doesn't necessarily have anything to do with with sexuality. It's just categories of words. Now, a man is a masculine word. Uh, a husband or a male is a, 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 an heir, masculine. And a, a woman is a gune, feminine. It fits, right? It's just, just not a hard and fast division. You, here's are categories. Okay, so here we have the word junias. That are junion. Uh, so you have junias or junia. Junion is the accusative case. The accusative case has the same ending for masculine, for feminine, and for neuter. Junion, the an. So you cannot translate it from the information here, male or female. You don't know. There's no evidence here that it's one or the other. So you have to look in the broader context of Scripture. Is there uh, the, the, the name Junias only, or Junia only appears here? So, and it's only a name, too. We're not talking about doctrine. So, uh, uh, but N.T. Wright bases the argument largely on this, that, that this woman named Junia was an apostle. But he ought to know as a scholar that the the name uh, the word junion can also be translated as junias, masculine. How would you, why would you translate it masculine? Because junias seem to be more common. Because the scripture prohibits women from ruling men or being uh, in a position of authority over men. Now N.T. Wright rejects that. N.T. Wright rejects scripture when he doesn't like it. That's N.T. right or N.T. wrong. So his whole argument based on Junia, and other people argue the same thing, but usually they're not scholars. They're not theologians. They're just ignorant. But N.T. Wright has no excuse. He just wants to pull the wool over your eyes. This whole argument from Junia is bogus. Unless you're a King James only is believing that the King James is superior to the Greek. Well, this would be a problem for you, wouldn't it? Well, let's go take a look at something else here. See this, but before we leave there, let me, well, we'll leave. Let me point out, if you want to know what the Scripture teaches, you have to go to where the Scripture teaches on a subject. Not trying to derive a a teaching from a uh, a doubtful translation of a name in a list of greetings in the back of Paul's epistle to the Romans. Really? Is that where you derive biblical teaching from? Or do you go to the Scripture, where the Scripture's actually teaching on the subject of pastors, elders, deacons, what their qualifications are? Wouldn't that be the place to go? Why don't they want to go there? Because they don't like what it says. When people avoid the teaching of Scripture and then try to build a case on nonsense, because that's what the word junia is, it's nonsense, because you can't, you have no basis to translate it, male or female, from that context alone. Well, if you look at the larger context and you know that the Scripture says that women, there's no women that were ever appointed apostles anywhere in the Scripture. Then you wouldn't translate it to disagree with the rest of Scripture. You would translate it in agreement with Scripture like the New American Standard and Young's Literal does. Junias. But if you're interested in selling Bibles in this contemporary age, then the ESV and the NIV and the NLT, you can understand why they translated it as Junia. 
because they have a, a, a system of belief that informs how they read the Bible. King James was just wrong. That's just, King James, they did make mistakes. Translators make mistakes. They are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. Um, sometimes they just make bonehead errors. And that's one of them right there. So let's go over to the actual teaching of the Scripture on the qualifications for a, a bishop, apostle, or a bishop, elder, uh, bishop, overseer. Those are uh, pastors. They're all synonyms. Those are all synonyms. So let's go over there, and we're going to look at First uh, Timothy, chapter three. Now this is also in Titus, the same list of qualifications. So we have two witnesses from the Apostle Paul writing to to uh, people that were uh, his. I'm not going to say servants, but they were. Um, his fellow workers, they weren't apostles. They were his assistants. And he's instructing them to appoint people in the churches. Because originally they were just assemblies of people. They didn't have deacons and elders. Those are added as needed. <laughs> you can have a church without a pastor. Or a deacon, you can. They're not necessary. You can, just can't have a church without Jesus Christ, and two or three disciples of Christ. Those are the essential agreements, uh, the ingredients, uh, the uh, Christ and His followers. You can't have a church by yourself, though. That is not an assembly of the saints. You have to have saints, and you have to have the Lord Jesus. And he is there wherever two or more of his people are gathered. So let's take a look here at, and I'm not even going to go in the passage in Corinthians about women being silent in the churches or being quiet. Uh, again, silent is a little harsh, I think. Uh, now, women in the church, are in all sense equal with men spiritually. There is no gender in heaven. Uh, there, in Christ, there is no male or female. However, we live in this created world in this age, in physical bodies that uh, do have, there's an order of creation, an order of authority that's God ordained. And the reason women can't be pastors primarily is because of that. Because of the gender roles God has established in his order of creation. That's why. And having a different arrangement in the church violates that. So this is not something that exists in heaven. Just like we're not married in heaven. We don't beget children in heaven. We are not Mormons. So, we are Christians. There's a difference. A whole lot of differences. So here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, uh, three starting at verse 2, it says, The bishop, or the overseer, pastor, elder, synonyms, must uh, then must be blameless. The husband of one wife, or you could say the man of one woman. The word husband here is not the man, is not the more or less generic andropos, anthropos, excuse me, anthropos, but the Greek word aner, which is the biological male human being. Got to be very explicit nowadays on that. The word wife is gune, which is a, a, a uh, gender-specific term, female, biological, gender, a woman of childbearing, you know, old enough to bear children, not a child. So an, an heir, A-N-E-R, uh, and gune, G-U-N-E, is what it looks like, 
is the male and the female, okay? Old enough to have a family. So, they, so that's why it's also a husband and a wife, which is the normal relationship. A person of childbearing age is expected to be married in the Bible. Not married is exception. As it was in American society a couple gen a generation ago, a person that was, say, thirty years old and single was like, "What is wrong with you? Something's not normal." Yeah, today everything is not normal. So the husband of one wife, right? That's what it says. So you can have all your arguments in the world about Junia and uh, oh, that mentions this person here, a uh, 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 church in the house of some woman because she was wealthy and had a big house. Yeah, that's, that's why, because they needed room to meet. And that her house was convenient. She, well, you can meet my house. That's, that's all it means. And they try to make something else out of it because they do not want to submit themselves to the Word of God because they do not want what God says, which means they're unqualified to be anything, unqualified to be Christians. So, uh, what does it say here? So again, the, let's, let's, let's look at the rest of the qualifications here, too. Husband of one wife, temperate, self-controlled, prudent, respectable, respectable, hospitable. This is um, welcoming of others. The idea here is it's, it's not just having an open house all the time, but the idea that so a stranger comes to the church and you go and greet them. Now, I've, I've visited churches where nobody even wanted to acknowledge your presence. And I thought, what is wrong with this church? So you come to a church, and a small church, for example, and they just ignore you. It's like, really? So the, the, the idea of, of hospitality here is w the willingness to welcome strangers. Especially strangers, that's what it's about. Able to teach. You have to be able to teach doctrine, to teach God's Word. Not addicted to wine or pugnacious, looking for a fight all the time. But gentle, uncontentious, free from the love of money. Think how many famous pastors are utterly disqualified based on this passage. Free from the love of money. He who uh, he he must be one who manages his own household well. See, you don't. This isn't about new Christians. I mean, they people with a, a track record as Christians is what this is for. Men, husbands. Say, how can you be one who has demonstrated ability to manage your own hus household if you're not married? So this pretty much lets out single young single men, too. They're not qualified to be overseers, to be elders, to be deacon, or, uh, deacons, even. You're expected to be the husband of a wife, to have a family, to demonstrate that you can control your own family, you can manage your family. Keeping his children... Under control with all dignity. But if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? Good question. In other words, every Catholic priest is disqualified, and Pope and Bishop, all disqualified. Paul says they must be the husband of a wife and have a family. I think that's pretty wise. Doesn't say they must have a seminary degree or a college degree. Nothing like that. See, Paul's qualification, God's qualification, and man's are two different things. 
and not a new convert. Oh, yes. How many people, like in the music industry, celebrities, they come to Christ, and next thing you know, they put them on a pedestal, and then they fall. They fall. They fall. They're, they're not mature enough to be put in that position. If you care, if you want people to look up to you, and to honor you, and to, to follow you, you're not qualified. You have to want people to follow Jesus Christ and not you. Or you're not mature enough to be an overseer, an elder, a pastor, or a, de a deacon even. Not a new convert, lest he become conceited. Yeah, oh yes, we've seen this so many times. And fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. See, new believers are babes in Christ. They're a whole lot of flesh and a little bit of new creation. The seed has not grown up yet. Um, a whole lot of flesh. And they're just, the devil will just eat them, chew them up, and spit them out. You, you, people become, even, even mature pastors become celebrities, and most of them don't survive or survive well. He, uh, and he must have a good reputation with those outside the church so that he may not uh, so that he may not fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil in other words if if you're a, a businessman for example and you've got a bad reputation in the community uh-uh mm -mm. deacons likewise must be men of men of dignity let me check that to see if that's I want to take a look there, Tim. I think it says the same thing. We'll look and see what exactly it says. Oh, the, the man's inserted. That's not even there. Uh, although... Uh, Diakonos is in the masculine, by the way. It doesn't matter, uh, we'll, as we'll see here. They are certainly men. Um, men of dignity, not double-tongued. Say English translations. They often insert words to make it understandable in English. Or addicted to much wine, not double-tongued. Not speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Uh, not saying this here and then that there. And in other words, being consistent. <laughs> consistent in what you say. Not pandering to different groups. Not being a politician. That's... <laughs> say this to one group here and then this to the other group over here. Promising the farmers this, and promising the the uh, the the welfare recipients that, and this, it's just uh, how many politicians will be in heaven? Any? No liars in here in heaven. Those who love and make lies do not have a place in heaven. Book of Revelation. But holding, uh, not a double-tongued or addicted to much wine or fond of sordid gain. See, in positions of authority, especially the deacons, because they handle material stuff, uh, the, the, this is share, uh, sharing of possessions inside the church to those in need in the church. Not in the world. This is not like the Salvation Army junk. This is looking after the brothers and sisters in Christ who have a need in the local church. And deacons are those who, they need to investigate the situation and make sure there's a real need there too because there's always people going around looking for a freebie. And it's easy, if you're in a position like that and you're carnal, uh, it, it would be easy to uh, appropriate things for yourself, for example. 
that were actually now deacons and elders had a right to eat out of that too because they were i mean those that were serving uh especially if they didn't have a, a, an independent source of income you know they, they were they were the, they were also the poor brother but to to uh, to be in other words to dis to distribute what you're entrusted with justly is really what I was talking about here which is why deacons were created in the first place some people were being neglected because they didn't speak the the local tongue in the book uh, church of Jerusalem they were the uh, the the Greek speaking in other words they didn't speak the local Aramaic dialect, probably, which would have been tr probably true of most of the Jews in the world. <clears throat> but holding uh, to the, oh, by the way, uh, people in ministry, because others are giving things and that, uh, like in the mission field and, and homeless ministry, there's, I've seen people too many times abuse that uh, and not be faithful to God. Just saying, well, nobody will, you know, and I don't want to push it too hard because you can get so persnickety. But if, if you are basically taking stuff that you somebody gives, oh, I'd like that, take it, and you don't need it, has been given for those who need it. You're not being faithful to Jesus Christ. There are some things that you that lots of stuff comes in. And it's gonna, it's, you know, it's gonna go to waste anyway. Then, then it's not, you know, like we used to get food donations right down on the Mexican border uh, from stores, grocery, you know, the grocery stores. They get cakes and stuff that were at at their shelf life limit. Uh, other things, and. If it just sat there, it wasn't given away, it'd just get moldy. So, you know, things like that. Uh, sometimes there was excess stacks. I remember one time, I think I took a pie at, with permission because it, it was going to go waste anyway. But I didn't make a habit of that. I didn't feel good about that. Um, I felt a little bit guilty about that even, even though that there was no secrecy involved or anything else. Some of the people that I was working with that was in charge of some of these missions, I lost respect for them because they were not faithful in doing things in a godly way. I've seen too much of that. And I have a picker of views on missions that you, if you have, you, you better know what you're given to. That's all I can say. I, because I was down at the border. We saw a lot of stuff. Missionaries had to come out, out of Mexico every couple months, I believe, to renew their visa. They had to be there on a tourist visa then. There was no resident visa available for that. It's a lot easier to get in the United States sometimes than it is in, in Mexico. So that was, uh, but you have to be faithful to God, especially if you're a servant in the church. You're called to be faithful to God. And, of course, because you're faithful to God, you have to be faithful to the church. Do things God's way, but don't do it at all. So it says the women, now here this is, so we have women that are uh, either the wives of deacons or deaconesses. Must be dignified, not malicious gossips. So in other words, going door to door helping families with their needs is not an excuse to spread gossip. Uh, but temperate, faithful in all things. Let deacons be the husbands, there's the word an heir, of only one wife, Gune. So a deacon, a deacon again, they're required to be married. In other words, how can you show you can you can be faithful if you're not in you know God's called us generally to marriage. You can't be I don't think you can be a deacon or a, an elder unless you have a family, unless you've been married. Catholic priests are utterly unqualified. Utterly unqualified. I can remember 
I got married in a Catholic church. My my in laws were Catholics. Okay, so I said, why not? Uh, it's, it's Jesus. It's him. It's it's uh, marriage is about commitment to one another and to Christ. It's not about uh, that. So uh, to please my father in law. So basically, and there's not much difference between that and Latha and Lutheran anyway. But uh, uh, you know, we had to go to to marriage counseling. I was thinking, really, <laughs> what basis do you have for counseling us? Because they don't use the Bible. <laughs> and they're not married. Uh, okay, what do you know about it? Nothing. Okay, so that's see they can't be. See, Catholic priests are utterly un, uh, unqualified to be pastors, to be leaders, to be elders, to be deacons. They're utterly unqualified. Okay, so, uh, but here when it talks about women possibly being deaconesses or the wives of deacons, it's not clear. It just says women, uh, which is, let's see here. Okay, this, yeah, this is, this is Gune again. This is, so this is, this is wives or could be women. Now, these, we have to understand something here about, the deacons were appointed, the seven original deacons were appointed because of a in, uh, inequitable distribution of food in Jerusalem. Some of the people were being neglected probably because others weren't aware of them. Language issues, the Greek-speaking uh, Jews in, this, in the church was being neglected. Now we're talking about the church in the entire city. So you could have, you know, people, a lot of these people might have been uh, sort of strangers, uh, people that had come in from other parts of the Roman Empire. Jews were everywhere. Uh, they they may have come from Egypt. They might have come from Rome. Might have come from even uh, Galilee. Probably spoke. Uh, some of the people up there might not have spoken anything but Greek. And so, in the local, if the locals spoke, say, Jewish Aramaic, and the others were like, you know, that they just weren't in part of the in group so the apostles appointed seven deacons and they seem to have all grecified names like stephen and philip and the others to that indicate you know they said well why don't we appoint people that are that are those experiencing the problem there's a little wisdom there to get some uh, to be acceptable generally so but women here a, a deaconess there are cases where the, that would be probably necessary. You don't want uh, men interacting with women uh, without their husbands present. Uh, also, well, you don't necessarily want women interacting with women without their husbands present either. But there are certain things that women, that men shouldn't be involved in. Uh but men need to oversee it. And deacons are those who oversee the distribution of the, uh, the, to the needs of the, the saints. Whereas I would say a deaconess is one of the, the, the word deacon means minister or servant. Diakonos. So uh, a, a female diaconos would be a, a servant, but not a servant in charge, I would say, based on what the Scripture teaches. If that makes any sense to you. So this could be wives of, of deacons, or they might be other women. that We know there were elderly women that were uh, widows, that had, had had a lifetime of devotion to the saints, and they were just sort of put on the church charity role, uh, <clears throat> rather than. And, but the younger ones, Paul said, go out and get married and have children, <laughs> because the ones that were. Maybe that's where the the origin of nuns came from in a way way back, and the the roots of that, where people were, you know, they were allowed to uh, just. Uh, because they were servants of the church. They, they ministered to the needs of the saints. Uh, and so rather than, 
they just wanted to do that and so that's what they weren't they were allowed to do and so they got to uh, eat out of the donations but they were they were uh, and they could have been uh, the women here too of course this would have been earlier I think no that this is Timothy this is late so uh, that's my take on that. Is very, Paul's explicit here. So we have other examples too of the seven deacons. None of them are women. Uh, so the, the and of uh, elders, there there is no biblical case that you can show where there is a a woman appointed to be a pastor or an elder or apostle or a deacon. A deacon in the sense of being in charge of the distribution of the uh, of the, the offering because that they didn't build buildings it didn't go to salaries the offerings were for those in need and sometimes those in need were apostles and pastors especially if that they were so busy that became their full-time occupation They didn't have salaries. They didn't do what we do today. We need to go back to God's ways, do things the way he did. But there are so many people out there today that are just, they love the world and the things of the world, and they want to be conformed to the world. They don't want to be Christians, really, except they want to have Jesus. They want to have heaven, but they don't want to suffer. They don't want to be persecuted. They don't want to be canceled. They don't want to be shunned. They don't want to be mocked. They don't want to be. Uh, they, they don't want to be thought down of by their friends. They want to be hip. They want to be in whatever the current language is for that today. They want to be popular. Well, forget it. If that's what you want, just forget following Christ. Because you love the world, and the things of the world. And the scripture says, if you love the world and the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. So if you don't want to follow the clear teachings of scripture, fine. Just don't call yourself a Christian. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't claim to be what you're not willing to be. If you're, if, do not allow others to tempt you to violate God's word, violate the clear teachings of God's word. And again, women are, if, if you're a woman in the church, you are equal to a man as far as being a priest before God the Father. What more can you aspire to? That goes on into eternity. Male and female, when you leave the body, that leaves the, that stays in the ground. When you die, that dies with your body. Your sexuality dies with the body. It has no place in heaven. But in this age, God has ordained an order. And if you love God, you will abide in his ordained order. Whether you're male or female. Men might not like this either. I don't particularly like it either. You know, it's... But God has said it. That makes it right. I mean, today especially, this is... Uh, I don't like to domineer others. And that is not what this is about. When pastors are control freaks, they're not qualified. They're not qualified. Jesus gave us an example. Remember when he washed the feet of his disciples? He gave us an example. He said, you know, in the world, those that are great in the world are called benefactors. Godfathers. Sort of like the godfather in the movie. In the movie. You go, the rich people, they were called patrons, patrons, patrons. So you'd go to the rich guy. You know, and, and he would he would help you with your problem, perhaps. You'd go get an audience, and like the Godfather movie, and yeah, yeah, I'll, I, I can help you with that. 
But he got something in return, too. He got your admiration, your thanks, and your loyalty. It was a deal, like the Godfather. Yeah, I'll help you out. But you'll help me out later when I need help, won't you? I might ask you to do something for me sometime, right? Okay. Yeah. But that's not how it is in the church. Jesus says it's not going to be that way among you. That's the world. Among you, he that would be greatest among you must be the servant of all, the least. Wash the feet, which was the lowest position. The servant that had to wash the feet of the guests and people when they came into the house, that was the lowest servant on the totem pole. And Jesus did that. That's why, that's why Peter said, no, Lord. Why? Because it was it's dishonorable. And Jesus was willing to take the dishonorable job. Is your pastor willing to do that? If if there's nobody to clean the toilets, and there's a, there's a mess, or something needs to be cleaned, is he willing to do it? Or is he too important to do it? Is he too high to lower himself to wash feet? To do the dirty jobs that nobody wants to do. It's good. If your pastor can do that, then maybe you have the right guy there. If not, well, you got a problem. You got a problem. I actually had that happen to me one time. And, I mean, well, the church I was pastoring with, people would sign up to clean the church, you know. Had a sign up board so get get done it. I made sure my wife and I were signed up. We'd go and clean the church too. And I'd do whatever needed to be done, you know. It's just part of the job of being a servant. Why are you there? Because you love God and you love God's people or are you there for some other reason? But I remember when I was going to, to language school trying to trying to learn Spanish. Um, they assigned me to clean the restrooms. And I remember one time I went in there and some of the other students were saying, no, they shouldn't give you that job. You're a pastor. I said, yes, they should. <laughs> I know what God's doing. And I went in there one time and they had some guests that came into that school. And, and I went to clean the bathroom and somebody had, had smeared feces all over the wall. Oh, <laughs> it's like... But I knew, it's like, I'm there to serve, serve the Lord. <laughs> I wonder if the devil had something to do with that, but it didn't work out for him either, because I was like, okay, this is what God calls me to do. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you just praise God while you're cleaning the stuff, the poo off the wall. You can do that if you've got the right attitude. If you're trying to exalt yourself, no, you could never do that. If you're trying to serve yourself, if you're trying to make gain for yourself, you won't do it. You won't be a servant of the Lord Jesus. You won't wash feet. And I'm not talking like the Pope. These, these people that do it for show or they make a doctrine out of it. They don't understand what Jesus did. If you're not willing to lower yourself and be the least, you're not qualified to be the top either. Well, that's what I have to say. Again, women, just be, you have the different roles, but not before the throne of God. Different roles in this age, in these bodies, but not before the throne of God. How can you be higher than a priest of the Most High God. Coming before his very presence, clothed in the righteousness of Christ, interceding for the needs of the saints and for the world. You can't have a higher position than that. Can you?